Hello. So, continuing my videos on games I own that I've only played once. Next, as you can see, is Firefly. Played this one time uh, back in 2015 with a friend of mine, so it was just a two player game. So, the little bit I remember of that was I think we both liked the game, but we thought it took um, too long. I can't. Seems like for just the two of us, it took like three hours or something like that. Um, so we thought that was a little too long for just a two-player kind of pick-up-and-deliver game. But I think we enjoyed it. So um, I went ahead uh, over the past couple days and played a game by myself as three players. So... I'll go through the uh, setup, how to play, and then I'll do a couple of example turns and uh, tell you what I thought of it um, when I played it again over the past couple of days. Okay, so the first thing it says to do in a three-player game, which is what I'm playing, um, well, three or more players, is to find these cards um, for these two nav decks that say reshuffle deck and take them out and put them in their discard piles and then uh, they get shuffled in once you've gone through the a whole deck and then you reshuffle the deck then those will get go on in but um, at the beginning of the game they're not in the decks and of course then afterwards um, after they get shuffled in when you've gone through the deck, whenever they come up, then you reshuffle your discard pile into your deck. Okay, next you'll place the Alliance Cruiser in this Londinium space. And you'll place the Reaver uh, ship up here on the Firefly logo in border space. Okay, next it says to take these setup cards, which, you know, contain... Beginning uh, drive cores and different leader cards. It says take those, put them in the middle of the game board. Then everybody rolls a dice. The player with the highest roll selects a leader and a ship uh, card and uh, their beginning core drive. Which with the base game, I'm only doing the base game. I should have mentioned that earlier. There are several expansions for this game. I'm only... Uh, talking about the base game in this video so each uh, of the ships in the base game just always start with this uh, beginning core drive so then after the uh, person who had the highest role selects their which leader they want and which ship card they want and gets their core drive then it passes around to the left in player order selects their leader, their ship, and their core drive. Not core drive, drive core. And then uh, starting with the player who got to cho choose their leader last, they then get to place their Firefly uh, in any sector they want on the board and then go in, uh, in reverse order. So the last player to place their ship in a sector on the board will be the player who got to chose that choose their leader first. So I've done that. I got each player's chosen leader. This one chose Serenity and Mal. This one chose the Bonnie May and Monty. And this player chose Bonanza and Burgess. And they've placed their ships as you can see here. Uh, this is the Bonnie May here at the Space Bazaar. This is the Bonanza here at Osiris, and Serenity is up here at Regina. Okay, then you'll choose one of these story cards um, that kind of tells how you how you win the game. Each one will have like a different uh, types of goals to win the game. Um, I went with the, the, this uh, first time in the captain's chair, which is the recommended. Um, story card for your first game and the story card may change the setup rules a little bit um, depending on which story card you choose and uh, 
it'll show the, the what goals you need um, to complete and win the game. Okay, next, each player will get uh, 3,000 credits. <clears throat> they use paper money in this game, which I actually kind of like it in this game. But anyway, each player will get 3,000 credits, six fuel in their ship, and each cargo space on your ship card can hold two fuel and two parts. And again, each cargo space in your uh, ship can hold two parts. So each player will get that 3,000 credits, six fuel and two parts which I've done here for my three ships okay next in the rules it says each player will take a job card from each of the contact decks and then since you can only have three um, job cards in your hand you discard down to three however with the story card chosen for this game, it says when taking starting jobs, only take a job from Harkin and Amundul. These jobs may be discarded as normal. So instead of taking one from each of the five decks um, in this one, each player will just take one job from Amundul and one job from Harkin. And then you can decide um, to keep keep it or not to keep it if you decide um, not to keep one of these then you just put it in the discard deck or discard pile for that deck so let me deal those cards to each of my players okay so I've got uh, two jobs for each player and these normally in a real game these are in your hand so the other players um, don't know what you have in your hand but uh, Obviously, <laughs> when I'm playing solo, that doesn't matter. And then for each of these supply decks, you'll flip over the top three cards for each deck into their discard pile. And the rules say you kind of want to watch what gets flipped over here because you may see something that you want now I will say nothing I saw in the startup I mean in the setup um, section of the rules said anything about shuffling any of these decks other than saying uh, when these uh, decks these two nav decks run out and you have to add those cards then you reshuffle but I mean it seemed obvious to me that these decks should all be shuffled um, at the beginning of the game even though it's not stated uh, anywhere in the rules as far as I could tell in the setup rules and that's really all that's stated in the in the setup of the rules although there it you know um, there is a deck of misbehave cards which you need to um, shuffle and place somewhere near the board <clears throat> and then of course there's uh, lots of different uh, tokens for cargo and um, passengers and fugitives and, and such that need to be placed uh, somewhere near the board and actually in the setup instructions it doesn't really say where to place these cards although there is a picture in the rules as can be seen here so it does the picture does kind of tell you um, where to place these cards but there's nothing in the actual instructions that says that so I find that um, a little bit odd and that they don't mention anything about shuffling the decks now if I'm just missing it and somebody else knows where it is please let me know so that's pretty much all of setup so now we'll get to uh, what you can do on your turn okay well what can you do on your turn well there's four things you can do fly buy, deal, or work. And that sounds simple, just four things, but some of those things uh, 
can entail several steps. So let's start with fly, that's pretty easy. So when you fly, basically you're moving your uh, ship, your firefly, around the verse. So um, the easiest thing you can do is what's just called mosey along, which lets you just move one space. That's it. Now, um, I should have mentioned, um, on your turn you get two actions, and out of those two actions you can choose, um, you know, the fly, buy, deal, or work. So you can never take the same action twice, so moseying along is pretty slow, because if you take a mosey along action, you can't then take another fly action and mosey along again. So you, you know, you can only take one fly action per turn. So that's not the best way to move in the verse to mosey along since you can only take move one space. So the other way to fly is to use your um, drive core. And depending on the drive core you have, which all of the uh, ships in the base game start with this same drive core, you can initiate a full burn to move up to five spaces by spending one fuel. So remember at, I said at the start of the game you start with six fuel so if you wanted to fly and do a full burn you'd discard one of your fuel and then you could possibly move up to five. I say possibly because when you're doing a full burn I don't remember where this guy started here I think when you're doing a full burn each time you move a space you have to draw a nav card. Now, when you're moving in this blue um, sector, which is, you know, in alliance space, you'll draw one of these alliance space cards. When you're moving in any of these outer sectors, the rules say with a yellow border, but really only some of these look yellow to me. These look more white border to me. But anyway, anything outside of this blue space, um, is border space and you'll draw one of these border space cards. So we'll say you did a full burn um, so you you know with with this drive so you spent your one fuel and you want to move five so you move one space then because you're in alliance space you would draw an alliance space nav card. Now this one here you can it has two options and you can choose which of the options you want to do so prepare to be boarded any contraband and fugitives that you have that are not in your stash are seized. Well, you'll see your ship has regular cargo hold and a stash. So if you got this card and you went with this option, if you had any contraband or fugitives just in your regular cargo hold, they would be seized. If they were in your stash, then they would not be. But either way, then you come to a full stop. So then you just have to stop right there, and that's the end of your fly action. So even though you spent a fuel um, to do a full burn, you only got to move one space, and then you had to stop. Now, the other option you could choose is turn and burn. So you could then spend another fuel, and you'd get a warrant issued, um, which is not good because... Um, if you have a warrant like this, Harkin, he won't, you can't uh, become solid with him, which we'll talk about that later. And um, also, if you're ever in the same space with the Alliance Cruiser, you got to pay $1,000 for every warrant you have. Um, and then uh, you'd get a warrant, and then you could evade, which means which means you move your ship to an adjacent sector. You don't have to draw another nav card when you do that, but um, then you have to stop and you can't uh, move any further that turn. Then if you were in a, at a planet where you could do another action, you could still do that. But as you can see, um, some of these cards, even though you've, you've done a full burn, you, you may not get to go very far. Now, um, a lot of cards in here. Let's just draw the next one. Well, that one actually has a lot. Good grief. Need to shuffle these up better. Oh, my goodness. 
I'm trying to, yeah, I was going to say, a lot of these cards just say this, the big black keep flying, and then you move another space, and then you draw, so let's just say instead of getting that card that I got, I moved here, um, and I got this card, and put it in the discard, then I would move another space. Now, because I'm in the uh, border space area, instead of drawing from the alliance space deck, I would draw a card from the border space. Now this one just says a big back, big black keep flying. So then I would move another space. So you keep doing that till you get to your destination or until you know a card makes you stop. And I did just want to mention you know when you're flying like I said if you're ever in a space with this alliance cruiser and that can happen several ways. It can happen from uh, one of these nav cards or um, well, it's usually always from a nav card. There'll be um, some cards that allow another player to move the ship one space, or some of them will just bring it directly to you. But in any case, if you're ever in the same space with that Alliance Cruiser, and you're an outlaw ship, then you have to resolve what it says here. And you're an outlaw ship if you've got fugitives, if you've got... Uh, contraband on your ship or if you have wanted crew um, I don't have an example right here but we'll get one later but <clears throat> some of the crew cards um, <clears throat> like this is a crew card you can buy some of them will have a little wanted symbol down here by this price so if you have any wanted crew then you're an outlaw ship or if you have a warrant. So in, if any of those things happen when you're in the same space of that Alliance cruiser, then you have to go through this. And like I said, paying a fine uh, of a thousand dollars for each warrant that you have, and then you get to get rid of the warrant. Any contraband and fugitives not in your stash are seized. Then for each wanted crew you have, see this is the little symbol that would be next to your, um, on the bottom of your crew card if they're wanted. You got to roll the dice and you have, you know, a possibility that they get removed. But otherwise, they get to get away and then you have to stop. So, I think I've covered the fly action pretty well. Well, I would be remiss not to mention the old Reaver ship. Um, if you start, sometimes if you happen to be in the same space of that, if you start your turn with the reaver cutter, then you got to go through this. And usually you're going to lose some crew. Um, you have two options. You can, we haven't talked about these tests yet, but we will here shortly. But you can try to choose this um, as an option, or if you have a pilot or a mechanic, you can spend one fuel and evade them. So we should probably take a minute to talk about some of these tests. So there'll be um, some of these nav cards, some of these aim to misbehave cards, um, and some of these job cards will have skill tests that you have to do. Now this one that shows the picture of a gun um, and the dice and the number that that's a fight skill so you'll see that some of your crew like here Malcolm he's got two fight skill and one negotiate skill so when you're resolving you know a test like this say serenity was trying to resolve this test here well you would roll you get to roll one die and add the number of um, the required skill icon so this one requires the fight skill so Malcolm has two so you roll one die which that would be terrible and add the number of skill you have so Malcolm has two plus one my result would be a three so I'd have to kill two crew and then evade so that would be not very good now the more crew you get um, you know for instance if you bought this which we'll talk about in a little by action but if you had this crew also you can have a max of six crew but if it Malcolm had this crew well he's got a fight skill also so then you would add three plus whatever you rolled and of course with the roll I got that would still be terrible in any case here even with an eight plus you still have to kill one crew 
but there are different type of skills you have the fight skill tech skill negotiate skill so there'll be tests that use um, different combinations or um, anyway tests that use these different skills and your crew adds their um, your crew will add their skills to whatever you roll and one other thing the six on this dice is the fire, firefly symbol so if you roll a six when you're doing a test you get to count that as a six and then you get to roll again to uh, add a bonus to your roll so you know if I rolled a six and added uh, Malcolm's two I would that would give me eight and I'd get to roll again well <laughs> anyway you see how that would go you get to add a bonus you get a bonus roll if you roll a six when you're rolling for a test okay so um, the other thing you can do besides a fly action is a buy action so if you're in a space that has see this says space bazaar this has Persephone this has uh, Regina this has silver hold if you're in a space that matches one of these supply decks up here then uh, one of the actions you could do is a buy action so when you're doing a buy action you can consider up to three cards from the discard pile so you can look through the discard pile and choose up to three but if you only choose to consider uh, maybe two of these then you can draw one from the top or if you choose you're only going to consider one from the discard pile then you can um, draw two from the deck but however many you end up um, considering you can only buy two up to two and when you buy a card um, you know you pay the cost here if it's a crew it goes into your um, you know towards your max crew uh, if it's some kind of equipment you know it just goes on on your ship um, and then your crew can equip it and they'll have um, keywords of course this one if a crew is equipped with it that gives one tech you know when doing a tech test but some of them also have keywords like this hacking rig well some um, tests that you'll be doing may have um, a, where if you have that keyword you just automatically pass it so um, you know and there's wash and some of these uh, like he's a pilot so some tests you're doing may say or some nav card you have may say if you have a pilot you don't have to do this or um, you know something like that plus he adds a tech and a negotiate when you're doing that kind of test and plus one to full burn range with this guy so instead of normally um, having a range of five when you do a full burn you know if you had a wash you, you would uh, get to move six so anyway when you're doing a buy action you from whichever space that corresponds to the supply deck you can consider um, three cards first you decide if you want to consider um, cards from the discard and then for um, any less than three that you consider um, from the discard you can draw and then as I said you can buy up to two and then any that you don't buy um, go back into the discard pile so I know that it seems confusing but basically it's you can look through the discard pile see if you want to buy um, any of those and then um, if you if you only want to consider you know one of those you can get two from the deck or if you want to consider two of those you can get one from the deck or if you don't want to say you say I don't want to consider you can look through them and then say no I don't want to consider any of these and then you can draw free three from the deck and then like I said you can buy up to two and any you don't buy go into the discard pile and then uh, also when you're doing a buy action and uh, looking at purchasing cards 
you can also buy fuel for 100 and parts for 300 so that's in addition to your um, buying your cards and then also if you're in a uh, sector with a supply planet you know one that corresponds to one of these supply decks instead of taking a buy action if you have a crew that are disgruntled which we haven't talked about yet but your crew can become disgruntled because of uh, various jobs or actions that happen from cards and so if you're at a supply planet um, like this instead of taking a buy action you can do what's called shore leave and if you do that you have to pay to the bank a hundred dollars for each crew member you have and then um, you can remove disgruntled algorithm disgruntled tokens from them now you still have to pay the hundred dollars for each crew member even if some of your crew don't have the disgruntled you have to pay it whether they're disgruntled or not um, but then you get to remove the disgruntled tokens and again that's um, in place of a buy action so if you do the shore leave then you don't get to take the buy action okay the other kind of action you can take besides fly and buy is a deal action so if you're in any of these spaces um, that correspond to one of the people in these decks like here you're in Amundul, so he's got a deck here up here at uh, Persephone Badger he's got a deck um, up here at Ezra Niska he's got a deck um, anyway, so we've got Badger, Harkin, um, he's wherever the, uh, cruiser is at, so, um, if you're where the cruiser is at, you can deal with him, uh, you got Patience, who is, uh, over here, anyway, if you're in a planet, or where the cruiser is at, you can, uh, do a deal action and it's similar to the buy action where you'll uh, consider um, cards from the discard pile up to you know up to three um, any less than three that you don't consider from the discard pile um, then you can draw one from the top of the deck and then you can s accept up to two of them similar to the buy action now uh, one difference is you can only have three job cards in your hand. So, at, you know, at the beginning of the game, we each uh, took two. Now, of course, you had the option not to accept the two that you drew. You could have discarded one or both of them. So um, um, you could possibly take three. But since all, all of my players each... Uh, kept the two cards they had if they did a deal action they would only be able to uh, take one of those cards because you can't have more than three in your hand and again at the beginning of the game um, when it the supply decks all started with three cards in the discard pile already because in setup it said to um, Put three cards in your discard pile it does not say the same thing about the contact card so the first uh, time um, one of these contacts somebody does a deal action with them you would just draw three cards off the top of the deck and consider those and these job cards you get when doing a deal action are really the crux of the game because that's how you get money um, so let's just take a look at two that the Bonnie May had here. So this is a job from Harkin, who, again, I said runs this ship. <clears throat> so all of his jobs are, are going to be legal. You know, some jobs um, are illegal, and some jobs are immoral, and we'll talk about the difference of that here in a minute. But... Um, so each job card will tell you how you start the job. So for instance, this job is a shipping job, so you just pick up. So if you, if you decide to uh, 
Well, we'll talk about working jobs in a minute. <laughs> That's the last action you can do. So let's just finish uh, talking about the deal action. So the deal action is you can um, consider up to three cards um, from one of these contacts and uh, take up to two of them as long as you don't have more than three cards in your hand. And also, if you become solid um, with one of these contacts, and you become solid with a contact by uh, completing one of their missions. And if you do that, then when you're doing your deal action with them, besides uh, looking for job cards, you can, like with this guy, you can sell him cargo for 600 and contraband for 500. Um, and for this guy, if you're solid with him, you can buy fuel from him for 100. And also, you know, another little special power here. So the last thing you can do is work a job. And that's when we'll kind of go into the detail of these cards. So, um, like I said, you can have three cards in your hand. But if you, are, if you decide to start working a job, you know, you have to be at the location, um, you know, for the where you can start working it so for instance here to start working this job you got to be in uh, mother load in the red sun area so uh, here's a red sun area so you'd have to be in this space and then you can start working this job now now the first thing you'll do when you uh, decide to start working a job is you have to decide which crew that you're going to use to work that job and um, I usually denote that by just kind of move them out, moving them out because when you're working a job if something um, happens like a crew get killed or something from um, working that job or an effect from working that job you know that's going to affect whichever crew you were using to work that job if you'd left some on the ship then they can't be affected by that. So normally you just have to say which crew you're using to work the job. Um, and then you can equip them. So any equipment that you've bought, you know, like weapons or uh, kind of how I was talking earlier about this um, security interface pad. Each crew can be equipped with one piece of equipment. So when you're working a job, you decide what crew you're using, equip uh, the crew with, um, equipment or weapons um, again each crew can only be equipped with one piece of equipment or gear I think I think <laughs> I keep saying equipment um, but it's called gear in this game so each crew can uh, be equipped with one piece of gear and again that's a weapon or you know something like I just showed you a minute ago and then you confirm the needs which is over here um, so like to do this job, you must be able to spend one additional fuel to do a full burn. Now that's not a really too good an example of a need. So let me find an ex a different one. Okay, so like over here, this job, the needs is um, you have to have at least two fight skill. So um, for instance, this guy, he could not start to work this job because he's the only crew currently and he's only got one fight skill. So he would not be able to work this job currently because the needs of this job is two fight skill. So he would have to um, end up getting a piece of uh, gear that would add a fight skill to him, like maybe a weapon, or purchase a crew that had some fight skill, and then he would be able to meet these needs and he could begin working that job. So again, you'll choose the crew. Um, equip them with gear, make sure you meet the needs, and then you can start working the job. Now, when you start working a job, it has to go over here in your active jobs area. You can only have three active jobs at one time. Now, that's separate from the three in your hand. So you can have three jobs in your hand, but you can also have up to three active jobs. So once you start working a job, it becomes active. So... Um, you can, like I said, you can have more than one active job um, 
you can have up to three and then three jobs in your hand but for instance so if if uh, this guy Monty he was going to start working this job um, and he was at mother load at Red Sun you know here then what he would do is load three cargo um, and then like he said anytime he's going to do a full full burn um, he would have to so this one's not really a need it's like a special action that applies when doing this job um, because he's got a heavy load whenever he's doing a full job a full burn while this job is active um, he has to spend an extra fuel but anyway to complete this job it says um, drop off at uh, Bernadette in White Sun so he would start here so whenever he gets here to Bernadette in the White Sun, then he can complete this job and he delivers the three cargo that were loaded here. So when you load cargo, which are just these uh, tokens here, you know, you, if you were working this job, you'd load three cargo. Um, so you'd have to have the space for it on your ship. And then when you got and went to your delivery point, you would deliver the three cargo, and then this is the amount you'd get paid. So then once this job was completed, you would get to um, place it like this, and then you're solid with Amon Dual. So being solid, as I said, um, lets you, in the future, if you go to where he is, you can sell him um, extra cargo that you have or extra contraband that you have for this cost plus he has this little bonus when solid may load pass passengers and fugitives at the space bazaar no limit so being solid uh, gives a little perk with somebody now if you're ever doing a job for somebody and you get a warrant then you lose your solid status with them so if I was doing another job started working another job for uh, Amnon Duel and I got a warrant then I would lose my solid status with him and I would have to discard this so anytime you complete a job if you're already solid with somebody and you complete a job for them then you just discard that card from the game but the first one you slip it under here so that you know you're solid with that person. Now, as I mentioned, when you complete a job like this one, you would get $1,900. <clears throat> but if you have crew, they have to be paid. So the way that works is, so say you had done a buy action um, to buy this crew, and he was now a member of your crew. When you bought him, you paid $100 for him. Well, each time you complete a job, your crew has to get their cut, and their cut is the amount you paid for them. So even though if I completed this and it was $1,900, I would um, only get $1,800 because my crew would have gotten a cut of $100. Now, obviously, as you get more and more crew, then they take a much bigger cut because you have to give uh, each crew their cut. Now, for each crew... You decide not to give their cut so you can like if you didn't have enough or didn't want to you could choose some crew who you say well I'm not going to give them their cut this time well then they get a disgruntled token on them and this is a disgruntled token so if you have a crew that becomes disgruntled you just put that on their card so what are the effects of disgruntled token well if one of your crew ever gets two disgruntled token, they'll just automatically jump ship and go back to whichever supply deck they were purchased from, and they go back into the discard pile there. So they've left your ship. Um, so that's it. That's if they get a second disgruntled token. But if you have a crew that's got a disgruntled token on it, and another player's ship moves into the same space as yours, they can hire away that disgruntled um, crew member for the cost of the crew member. So they can just say, I'm going to buy that guy, I'm going to hire him away, and then he comes to their ship and loses his disgruntled token. If your leader ever receives a second disgruntled token, 
then he fires all the crew. So if you're, that's not good. So if your leader ever um, gets a second disgruntled token, then all your crew just goes back to the supply decks from where they were purchased and you've lost them because the leader fired them. So you can get disgruntled for several reasons. Um, one thing about leaders, if they ever um, get would get killed for some reason from doing you know a job or some so for so any reason instead of actually getting killed they just return to the ship and they get a disgruntled token on them if you have a crew or your leader that um, says they're moral and they do a, a job like this one and they complete a job that has the immoral tag on it then they get a disgruntled token and you can get disgruntled tokens from um, some nav cards and from doing some of these aim to misbehave cards which we haven't talked about yet but we're about to do that right now so let me find a job so sometimes you're doing a job okay like this one so if you're at the Space Bazaar in the Red Sun, which is you know here, and you can take a work action and start working this job. So you, you see to work this job, you have to um, complete two aim to misbehave cards because there's two aim to misbehave uh, cards on there. It says misbehave to get paid. So the way you do that is you have to get past the first one so you come up draw an aim to misbehave card <clears throat> and they each have two options so this is tight security so you could choose this option and do a tech test so if you had crew um, you had a lot of good um, crew with tech symbols you could test this and if you get a one to a six then you've botched it and uh, botch just means you failed so um, you can keep the job in your active jobs but uh, you discard this card and that's the end of that work action you'll have to try it again later but if you manage to do this test you know roll the dice add your tech icons and get a seven plus then you proceed well then you'd have to draw another misbehave card and if you get a proceed from that then you've completed your goal. Now for this one, then you got to do this cover your tracks, do a tech test. And, uh, you know, you could lose rep with Omnon Duel or success getaway clean. But either way, if you uh, get past two um, aim to misbehave cards, then you've completed this job and you would get $3,000. Um, just the other option you could have chosen here, if you didn't have anybody good with tech, and you did have somebody good with the uh, fight, then you could try the fight test. Or if you had a piece of gear that had hacking rig, then you don't have to do either one of these tests. You just automatically pass this card and you would go on to the next one. And uh, that hacking rig, I think we saw up here in the Space Bazaar, you could have bought this um, hacking rig. So if, a piece, if you had bought this, and one of your crew that was attempting this to work this job was equipped with that hacking rig, well, you would just go straight past this card and go on and draw your next card. And the other thing you can do with a work action, say you just happen to be on any sector with a planet um, and you don't have something else you can do, um, you can take a work action and just collect $200. So... If you happen to be in a sector with a, with a planet, you can just take a work action and collect $200. So that pretty much explains all the actions. So, well, how do, the, how do you win the game? Well, again, that depends on the story card you chose. So, for instance, this one, you've got a complete goal. So the first goal is to be solid with two different contacts. And after you do that, then you take a goal token. So remember being solid with a contact is if you complete a job for them, then you become solid with them. So if you do that with two of these different contacts, then you'd get to take a goal token. 
which is one of these. And actually the other side of these is a warrant token. Um, we mentioned earlier you can end up getting a warrant for doing certain jobs or something like that. And if you get a warrant, you put that on your ship. Um, but if you complete a goal, then you put one gold token you know, on your ship or somewhere in your area. And then you know you've completed the first goal. Well, then you need to do your second goal. So to complete this goal, you need to have $6,000 in hand and your first goal token. So, um, you know, once you get $6,000, and you've already done the first goal, um, then you would get your second goal token. And then finally, to finish, the first player who travels to Ezra with two gold tokens and then pays 6000 to the bank wins. Um, so Ezra, that's up here. So that's how you complete this first mission, which is the suggested, uh, or first story card which is the su suggested starting story for this game but the other story cards that come with the game will have different uh, things you have to do to win so I mean that's basically uh, what you can do and how you play the game so if it all seemed a little confusing to you why don't we go through a few sample turns and see if we can get it all to come together. Okay, I think I've got everything back to um, how it was set up for the start. Um, Serenity with Malcolm is going to be my uh, first player. Game does come with this dinosaur, so whoever's turn it is uh, has the dinosaur uh, on their ship or in their area or whatever so all right so the serenity is the orange ship up there so let's see what jobs i currently have i've got this one where i need to be at londinium um, which is here where the alliance cruiser is and i've also got this uh, job at the space bazaar so that one's pretty far from where i'm at so first, why don't we, uh, I'm here at Regina, so let's, uh, let's look at, let's do a buy action, and we'll look at what's here and see if I want to consider any of these. Um, Alright, I'm going to consider, this is a ship upgrade, um, I'll consider one so I get to draw two. Let's see what I got. Alright, and I can buy up to two. Uh, I think I'll just buy this guy for 200 bucks and I'll put these back in the discard. Okay, so I paid the 200. And I bought this guy, so I'm going to put him in my crew here, which can have a max of six. So that's one action. I did a buy action. Now I could also, if I wanted to, buy some fuel or parts, but I'm pretty full of that. So that's all I'm going to do. And uh, now since I have this um, mission, um, I think I'm going to try to do that. So I'm going to head over, and over toward Londinium. So I'm going to do a fly action, and I'm going to do a full burn. So remember, with a spend one fuel and I can move five. So I'll discard a, f a fuel, start hitting that way. Okay, that's one. Now because I'm in border space, I got to draw a card. Let's see what I got here. Uh, scrapper ambush. Do a tech test or a fight test. Well, none of my crew has tech. So my best bet is to do this fight test. So I've got one, two, um, fight from Mal, and two from Lund. So that gives me a total of four. So now I need to roll the dice, which is here. Good God, I'm having terrible luck. So that's five. So I got to kill a crew and full stop. So I have a choice. I could kill this guy and then he's out of the game. 
or I could say I'm going to kill Malcolm, in which case I just put a, he goes back to the ship and I put a disgruntled token on him. Um, I think that's what I'm going to do. Because remember, your leaders, um, if they would be killed, they'd just go back to um, the ship and get disgruntled. So that's what I'm going to do so I don't lose this crew. Um, now, of course, if he gets another disgruntled, he fires all his crew anyway. So we'll have, probably have to do a shore leave action at some point so that doesn't happen. But um, now i got to do a full stop. So I really only got to move one space with that fuel. And then that card goes onto the discard pile. So now that's uh, his two actions. So pass the dinosaur over to the player to my left, which would be Burgess and the Bonanza here. So he's here at Osiris. So he's going to do a buy action. So he's going to consider, let's see. Now what do we got here? This in one fuel. So he would get to move six spaces. Uh, let's see what else we got. Plus one on medic checks. And a medic. Um, so I think I'm going to buy these two. So that helps. Um, hold on, let me pay for these. That's 800, 900. So you'll see with a medic when a crew is killed you can make a roll and uh, maybe try to save them and this um, Simon surgical kit adds a plus one to your die roll and it gives one tech so I'll go ahead and uh, add that equip that gear to this um, crew member and add him to my crew and he has a one negotiate skill. Okay, so that's one buy action. So um, I still have another action. So I have this um, job, which I have to go to Valentine and White Sun. That's fairly close because I'm here and Valentine's here. So I think I'll head over there. So I'll do a fly action and I'll spend a fuel to do a full burn. So I move one, and I draw a card from the Alliance deck, keep flying, uh, two, draw another card, keep flying, and finally one more to arrive at Valentine, and keep flying, so no problems there. Alright, so that's his two actions, so he passes the dinosaur over to the Bonnie Mae. Well, he's got this job that he can do um, at Mother Load and Red Sun, and he's at the Space Bazaar, so that's pretty close. Um, still two spaces, so if he wants to get there this turn, he's got to spend a fuel, so he's going to do that and do a full burn. So he can move up to five spaces, hopefully. Well, I only really need to move two, so he moves one. He's got to draw a border space card, keep flying, and moves another that's where he needs to be but he's got a drum order space card uh oh reaver bait so i got to choose one of these move the reaver cutter to any border sector not occupied by a firefly and keep flying or um, move reaver cutter to your location and evade well i don't want him in my location so uh Move the reaver cutter to any border sector not occupied by a firefly. So I think I'll move him over here. So that uh, kind of will interfere with him possibly. Um, and that's as far as I want to go anyway. So I'm going to stop my flying. So now I'm where I want to be for this job. So I'm going to do a work action. So. I'm going to make that active. Um, so again, I got to um, choose my crew. I've only got one. Equip, equip them with any gear. I don't own any gear. Um, and then make sure I meet the needs. This one doesn't really have a need that need to be met. So all I really got to do is load three cargo. 
Okay, so I've got the three cargo loaded. And then I just have to remember this applies um, whenever I want to do a full burn. I've got to spend an extra fuel, so it'll cost me two to do a full burn. And uh, this needs to be delivered to Bernadette in White Sun. So that's not too far, just to there. But that's my two actions. I did a move, and then I did a work action. Okay, so now we're back to uh, Serenity's turn. Now he's got to be a little concerned with this Reaver Cutter here. Um, it usually only affects you if you start your turn in the sector with them, so hopefully that doesn't happen. But remember, he's trying to make it over here to Londinium where the Alliance ship is. So he's going to um, do a full burn, fly action, do a full burn. So he's going to try to go around this guy just to avoid him. So he's going to go one there. So he's got to draw a border space. Oh, crap. All right. So he's got a test tech, which he has none. So that would be uh, not possible. Or he can spend two parts, which he has. But parts cost 300 apiece. So that would be 600 bucks he'd be losing so you know what i guess he's just going to stop again because it's better to have, spend another fuel and only cost a hundred than spend 600 in parts so he's going to stop now he can't take another fly action but because he is um in a sector with a planet he can just take a uh, he can just take a work action and collect $200. So like they just went there and did some make work of some kind. So I'm going to do that and I'll collect $200. Yeah, better than nothing. Makes up for that fuel I spent. Alright, uh, now we come to the Bonanza's turn here. So last time he had moved here to Valentine and he had a job where... Uh, he did need to be there. Um, but actually, I've noticed he can't start working on this job because it requires um, two fight. And he has only got one. His medic doesn't have one. So he really can't start working on that. So I should have checked that before. So he can't do that job. So he does have another job similar to the one that Bonnie May is doing. Um, so he can go to Mother Load at the Red Sun and load some cargo. So I guess he's going to head that way. So he's going to do a fly action. And he'll move one. Oh, he's got to, uh, since he's doing a full burn, he's got to just get rid of fuel. So he moves one, draws a card, keep flying. Uh, move another one. Draw a card, keep flying, move another one, now he's into border space, and that's his third move, um, so he's got to draw a card, now, so he's got to test tech, or spend a part, now he's only got one tech, no, he's got this equipped, so he's got two tech, Eh, he'll try it, you know, maybe he'll get a six. That's probably what I, I should have tried that uh, tech test with the other, because if I get a six, I get to roll again. So anyway, we'll see what we get. Three plus two is only five, so he's got to come to a full stop. So he didn't quite make it uh, all the way there. So that was his fly action, and he's not in a place with a planet, so there's nothing really else he can do. So, um, you know, I forgot to give him the dinosaur on his turn. But anyway, that's pretty much going to end his turn, so now we go on to the Bonnie Mae. And the Bonnie Mae is, it, is at Mother Load, and remember, uh, they started working this uh, job. Now, I may not have mentioned my rules overview, but once you start working a job, you can't ever just get rid of it until you complete it. It's always going to stay in your active jobs until you complete it. There's no way to dismiss it without completing it. Anyway, so he needs to go to 
uh, Bernadette and the White Sun. And remember, when he does a full burn, he's got to spend two fuel. So he's going to do that. He's going to spend two fuel. Put that in my discard over here. All right, he's headed to Bernadette, which is where? Oh, right here. All right, so he's going to move one. He's going to draw border space. Good grief. Well, he can spend one cargo and remove disgruntled from a crew. Well, he doesn't have a disgruntled or a cargo, so he can just do this. I'll be in my bunk and keep flying, so that's not too bad. All right, so then he'll go two. Still in border space. Keep flying. Um, three. Now he's in alliance space. Keep flying. Four. Uh oh. All right. He's got alliance entanglements. Move the alliance cruiser to any sector not occupied by a firefly or. Oh, that requires solid rep with Harkin. I don't have that, so I can just do this. Move the Alliance carrier to any sector, not any Alliance sector not occupied by a Firefly. So I'm going to move that over there. All right, that was my third move, right? One, two, three, four. No, that was my fourth move. I can go one more. So, player to your right. Must move the Alliance cruiser one sector within Alliance space. So that's the Serenity player. So he wants to kind of move it away from him. So he's going to move it one sector. And I think that's five. One, two, three, four, five. So that's as far as I can go. Um, but I am in a sector with a planet. So for my second action, my first action was to fly for my second action I can just do a work action and collect two hundred dollars all right and that ends his turn and then it goes back to serenity okay well Mal's gonna try again to get here to Londinium so he's going to spend another fuel to do a burn action a full a fly action and do a full burn so he's gonna move one space and he gets a keep flying. Okay, so he can move uh, into Alliance space. So he gets a keep flying. Go there to Osiris. Keep flying. That was his third. Fourth. Let's see what he gets. Keep flying. And one more to... Uh, Londinium and he gets to keep flying so good he arrived with no issues okay well for his second action he's going to work this job so that becomes an active job it doesn't have any needs <clears throat> he doesn't have any equipment or anything to assign for his crew and really for this job it's not really required all he has to do is load eight fuel Okay, so I've loaded eight fuel, and then on my next turn, I'll be heading over to Boros in the Georgia system, which is right here. All right, yeah, Boros. Okay, it's the Bonanza's turn. I know we were headed over here uh, to. Um, mother load to start this but I don't think I've shown a deal action yet so I think what I'm gonna do is uh, he's gonna do a fly action and just mosey so you get to move one space and then you don't have to draw a card or anything so he just moseyed up there and then for his second action he's gonna do a, a deal action um, with Onan Duel who is right here now there's no cards in his discard pile so he gets just gets to consider three so you can look at what kind of jobs might have available here say so this one will require a misbehave this is just another uh, 
you know, load. You know, it's just a shipping job, um, so it's legal and it's just a load and unload. That's similar to the one he has. Um, this one's a smuggling job, that's why it's illegal. And then uh, this one's also a smuggling, but it's going to be a little harder because you have to do two misbehave cards, and on this one you only got to do one. So because I already have two jobs in in hand, even though normally you can take two jobs, I'm just going to take, I can only take one because I've got two jobs in hand. So I think I'll take this job, and so these will go into the discard pile. And so the next time somebody deals with Omnum Duel, they can consider these jobs and then draw from the pile if they don't want to consider both. Or They would draw one anyway because you always consider three. But anyway, now this card goes into my hand, and that's both of my actions. Now we pass the dinosaur. It's Bonnie Mae and Monty's turn. And they... Uh, have the cargo from this mission so they're trying to get to Bernadette in the white sun to deliver it well that's only one space away because he's here at uh, Sinon or however you say that so he just has to mosey that way he doesn't have to burn a fuel or uh, draw a card so now he's at Bernadette so now he can take a work action so again if he that this job it doesn't really require it, but if he was going to do something where he needed uh, gear, this is when you would equip your gear and you know say which um, crew are going on the to work the job or whatever. But I've only got one crew member, and so really all I have to do is deliver the three cargo which I have, and I get paid nineteen hundred dollars. Okay, so I've got my money. Now if I had crew other than my leader, they would get their cut out of that and that money would go back to the bank. But your leader doesn't take a cut um, because all that money is his and I don't have any crew. So I collected my $1,900. Now, because I've completed that job for Omnon Duel, I'm solid with him. So I tuck that under there. And uh, I'm halfway to the first goal. Remember, the first goal for this story is to get solid with two contacts. And that's his two actions. All right, so now we would go back to Serenity. I think I've pretty much shown most of the actions. I'm going to play ahead a little bit until uh, Bonanza here is working this, just so I can show how a mission with an aim to misbehave works. So I'll play ahead a little bit and I'll come back when I start working that. Okay, well I did want to show, I did another round and I came back to Serenity's turn. And they happen to be in the same space at the start of their turn at the Reaver, with the Reaver Cutter. So they have to resolve this. So resolve when starting your turn in the Reaver Cutter sector. So they can choose, if we're very lucky, they can do a fight action, and they're either going to have to kill two crew or one crew. Or uh, he could do this crazy Ivan, but it requires a pilot and a mechanic. Well, I've got Malcolm, who's a pilot and a soldier, but this guy's a soldier, so I have no mechanic. So the only thing I can do is uh, try this. So... My fight, I've got one, two from him, and two from him. So I have a four fight, so I'm going to roll the dice. So that gives me a total of six, which says kill two crew. Well, <clears throat> all right, so I've got to kill this guy, so he's just out of the game. So I just put him kind of in a discard pile over here. Now, uh, Malcolm, my leader... He can't be killed. He returns to the ship and gets a disgruntled token, which that's going to be his dis second disgruntled token. So at that point, he would fire all the crew, but there's no other crew. And then they discard both their disgruntled tokens. So if I had other crew, uh, they would be fired and go back into their supply decks. But now I get to discard... I would have two tokens, you know, the second one for him being killed, and now I discard them both. Okay, and so that's not 
any action or anything on my turn. So now I, I would go on with my turn. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again off camera and I'll come back in a bit. Alright, it's the Bonanza's turn. They took a fly action and uh, just moved here to Persephone. And when they did that, they drew this salvage opt cards which let, let them load two contraband and then stop. So they loaded two contraband into their stash, and then they came to a full stop. So they still have um, another action, so they're going to um, work this job. So it requires being at Persephone. So they'll put that in their active jobs. Now they're going to uh, use all of their crew, so that's Wash. He has a disgruntled... Um, they've got uh, this gun hand... Uh, got this interrogator. Um, he's taking the medic just in case somebody gets injured. And, of course, also uh, my leader. So, I'm using all my crew. This guy's equipped with this uh, surgical kit. And the needs are to fight. So, I have that from my gun hand and my leader so it says misbehave to load two contraband so that means I draw an aim to misbehave card so I have two options uh, getting awfully crowded do a fight um, I gotta get a total of nine for a one to eight I kill a crew and get a warrant for a nine I'll proceed and since there's only one icon, um, one misbehave card required, that proceed would then mean I'm successful on this one. Or I could do this. Maybe we can make a deal. <clears throat> if this job attempt is successful, cut pay in half, rounded down, bonuses are unaffected. So I could just be successful, but I only get half the pay. And this job pays <clears throat> 2200 I would only get 1100 and then I've got to pay this guy 100 this guy 100 and this guy 200 so I think I think I'm gonna maybe take my chances no because I've only got two fight skill so if I didn't roll at least a six which would give me an eight but on a six, I'd get to roll another die. So I'd have to roll a six to have it to be successful at this. So I guess I'll go ahead and do this and proceed. So that makes this job successful. Now, if there was another card to be done, it wouldn't be successful yet. But because there isn't, then just proceeding past this card makes it successful. So I cut the pay in half. There is no um, bonus. Some cards... Um, See, this one has a, a bonus of $300 if I have a soldier, but I don't. I've got a medic, a merc, a pilot, and that's it. No soldier. So I wouldn't be getting that bonus, but if I did, it said it wouldn't be cut in half. So <clears throat> I just get 1100 for this. Okay, I was getting a little bit ahead of myself there. I actually, I actually, the job is not successful until I actually deliver the uh, contraband to three hills in the Georgia system up there. So I'm going to keep this to remember that I only get uh, half the pay when I complete this job and I'm successful by delivering the uh, the contraband that I picked up. So I picked up the two contraband, but I don't get paid until I actually uh, deliver it. And like I said, I'm just going to keep that as a reminder that I'm only going to get half the pay because of my decision. So I think I have shown, you know, example of pretty much all the actions you can do and how moving works and how a test works. Um, I didn't show... I didn't get to show you actually complete a goal, but, you know, if this guy or uh, Serenity complete a uh, uh, job for 
a different contact and they get a set they get solid with a second contact and they would complete their first goal and get a gold token so i think that gives you a good idea of how the game works it should i hope i know my rules overview was kind of wishy-washy but uh, i hope i hope the turn examples have given you and have a pretty good idea of how it works so anyway uh, my thoughts on it after now this being my second play well you know i played it the other day before i started my rules overview um so again just like my initial thoughts um from what i remembered playing it in 2015 i like the game i enjoy it it can be a little frustrating at times when you're trying to move somewhere and you spend a fuel and then you only get to move one space because of a card that you drew um, and then it seems, uh, you know, a lot of times you'll, you'll have to stop moving because of a nav card that you drew and you're in some space where there's nothing else you can do. So kind of tur a turn is wasted. Um, I believe, I don't know for sure. But I believe some of the expansions may, uh, um, uh, help with that. I think maybe they give you some other things you can do. And I know um, some of the expansions, I think there's the Pirates and Bounty Hunters expansion, um, maybe makes uh, some more interactivity between the players. And there's another, the Blue Sun expansion, I think uh, adds another board. And anyway, I know there's several expansions that add more to it. But I think what you get with the base game is quite a lot. Like I said, it takes it takes a, a while to finish a game. Um, at least the first couple of games that I've played since. Maybe as you learn more of what where to go to get what crew and what you need right off the bat. And maybe it makes the end game go faster. But overall, I enjoy it. I do think it's a little long um, for what it is. But... I would certainly uh, be happy to play it and would probably even suggest it. So I think I will. Uh, hopefully in the future when we get to playing games in groups again, uh, suggest this as one of the games we play. And I actually do have um, some of the expansions for this game. I got this game um, from the Secret Santa and they sent me the... Uh, the base game and the Blue Sun expansion and the Pirates and Bounty Hunters expansion and uh, I think Artful Dodger expansion which I think just adds a ship um, and may maybe something else but I, I got all of that but the only thing I've ever managed to play is you know the base game now for the second time so anyway I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching